welcome friends to this uh, lecture of uh, soil science and technology and uh, uh, in this lecture we will uh, start from the slide where we left in last lecture and in the last lecture we started uh, about the methods of uh, measuring the soil content and uh, today we will try to finish that and also we will today uh, this is the uh, this is the last lecture of week 2. So, we will try to show you some numerical examples uh, regarding the uh, bulk density, particle density and uh, soil water content and porosity which you already uh, have covered. So, let us start with the methods of measuring soil water content. So, we have already covered this uh, slide in our last lecture. So, we should move from here and let us let me show you uh, some measurement of water content. Now, measurement of water content as you know the direct method is called gravimetric method. So, measuring water content uh, so uh, can be done by this gravimetric method and water may be evaporated from soil by heating at 105 degree centigrade to a constant weight. So, what happens we take some uh, moist soil samples, moist soil from the field and we dry that uh, moist soil and we take the moist soil weight. Let us see that uh, uh, let us assume that it is a uh, uh, mass of moist soil and then uh, we dry the soil at 105 degree centigrade overnight and as a result the water evaporated and then we get the uh, mass of dry soil. So, gravimetric moisture content which is W which is denoted by W can be expressed in terms of mass of water evaporated in gram over mass of dry soil. Now, we already know the mass of dry soil that is Md and uh, mass of water evaporated can be already can be can be calculated by M M minus M D. So, if we if we subtract the weight of a dry soil from the weight of a moist soil we will get the mass of water evaporated. And so, this is one of the major uh, uh, you know method of measuring water content. However, there is another direct method co we call it volumetric moisture content and volumetric moisture content is generally uh, you know expressed in terms of theta. And Volumetric moisture content is basically uh, volume of water evaporated over the volume of soil and uh, the relationship between volumetric moisture content and gravimetric moisture content is theta equal to uh, W which is the gravimetric moisture content uh, multiplied by bulk density of a soil uh, over density of water which is generally 1. Now, bulk density of soil which is dB you know that mass of dry soil over volume of soil. So, it is basically the bulk volume of the soil. So, by using this formula we can convert from volumetric moisture content to gravimetric moisture content and vice versa. So, these two methods are direct method for measurement of water content. So, let us see uh, one example. So, if you see that a soil is sampled uh, by a cylinder by a cylinder measuring 7.6 centimeter in diameter and 7.6 centimeter length. So, calculate gravimetric and volumetric water contents and dry bulk density using the following data. Now, you can see already it has been given that weight of the empty cylinder which we used for collecting the soil from the field is 300 grams and weight of cylinder plus weight soil is 1000 grams and weight of cylinder plus oven weight which is 100 after drying 100 uh, you know over dry weight that is after drying at 105 degree centigrade uh, we get 860 grams. So, let us uh, uh, you know solve this. So, we already know that the volume of the cylinder is can be calculated by pi r square is the formula where uh, we already know uh, the value of r that is 7.6 and uh, so using that we can uh, you know uh, we calculate this 345 centimeter now 345 uh, cubic centimeter or cc now we know that weight of the weight soil is uh, uh, 
uh, weight of the weight soil is basically the weight of the cylinder plus weight soil minus weight of the empty cylinder so that will be 700 grams and we know and uh, the weight of the dry soil is 860 grams um, uh, sub, you know minus 300 grams which is the weight of the empty cylinder so we get 560 grams so dry bulk density is basically uh, we are getting weight of the dry soil over the uh, volume of the cylinder the volume of the cylinder is 345 and uh, uh, it is uh, you know ultimately we are getting 1.62 gram per cc. Now gravimetry, so once we collect the once we collected once we calculated this dry bulk density, now we can calculate this gravimetric moisture content. Now gravimetric moisture content you know the weight of a moist soil minus weight of a dry soil over the weight of a dry soil. So, we are getting 25 percent and also volumetric moisture content for calculating the volumetric moisture content you know we have to multiply the gravimetric moisture content with the dry bulk density. So, we already calculated the dry bulk density as 1.62 and we are multiplied with uh, multiplying it with 0 0.25 or 25 percent of gravimetric moisture content we are getting 0 0.41 or 41 percent. So, this is the result. So, the you know ultimately uh, you know the you know we calculated both uh, gravimetric as well as volumetric moisture content. So, I hope that uh, you have understood uh, this uh, solution. So, let us uh, move ahead and uh, see what are the other aspects of measurement of soil moisture. Now, as I have already told you that the in, uh, in the indirect methods, uh, this neutron moisture probe or neutron scattering is very much important. Now, among the, in, uh, you know, there are some radiation methods, if you, if you go back to our previous slides, uh, you can see that uh, the radiation technique, there are two types of radiation technique we generally use, one is neutron scattering, another is gamma ray attenuation. So, let us talk about the neutron probe. Uh, we call it Newton moisture probe also. So, this is the picture of Newton moisture probe and uh, basically in the Newton moisture probe, the, the probe is basically lowered. So, this is the soil surface and uh, we generally lower the uh, we generally lower the probe. Now, before lowering the probe, we have to install this access pipe. Now, this access tube is basically made of uh, some metal and basically this uh, Newton moisture probe is lowered into a soil via previously installed access tube and it contains a source of fast neutrons and a detector of slow neutrons. So, this is the this probe contains a source of fast neutron as well as a detector of slow neutron. Now, once we insert this probe into the soil through this access tubes and generate the neutrons, these neutrons will collide with the hydrogen atom. Now, how this hydrogen atom generated? These hydrogen atoms are, can, are basically coming from the nearby water molecules. So, once these neutrons are collide, you know, neutrons collide with these uh, hydrogen atoms of the water molecules, the neutrons further slow down and scatter, and we call it thermalized neutrons the slow neutrons are called thermalized neutrons and the number of slow neutrons or thermalized neutrons counted by a detector which is also present in this probe and uh, this basically corresponds to the soil water content and by this you can calculate the soil moisture or soil water content. So, this is the uh, principle uh, or this is the working principle of this neutron moisture probe. So, uh, let us see what are the, you know, this is a very efficient method, but it has got some drawbacks also. So, let us see what are the drawbacks of Newton moisture probe. First of all, for operating a Newton moisture probe, you need a radiation permit. Secondly, it is very much expensive instrument and thirdly, it cannot be used in a high organic matter or high organic matter rich soil. And finally, it requires an access tube. So, obviously, you can see there is a, uh, although the probe housing contains all the detector, you know, neutron generators and detectors and all these things. However, you have to pre-install a access tube and uh, this access tube will be required for measurement of moisture content through this neutron moisture probe. 
The another method is called TDR or type domain reflectometer. The type domain reflectometer works on the principle of type domain reflectometry. Now, you know that a dielectric material is poor at conducting electrical co current. However, it can support an electrostatic field something like a magnetic field and uh, instruments basically the type domain reflectometer which uh, you know which operates the principle of type domain reflectometry. It can measure the dielectric properties of soil which can be used to determine the proportion of the soil volume comprised of water because you know that the dielectric constant because uh, because of the fact that dielectric constant of water which is uh, basically 18 is far greater than other mineral particles or for air. Generally, in case of mineral particles, the dielectric constant varies from 3 to 5 and in case of air, the dielectric constant is 1. So, you can see the volume, you know, the dielectric constant in case of water is far greater and therefore, the dielectric constant for the whole soil is nearly proportional to the volume of water in the soil in the immediate vicinity that is 3 to 4 centimeter of the sensor. So, using this uh, working principle this TDR basically works and it can basically measures the you know moisture through its dielectric constant. There is a stark difference of dielectric constant between, uh, between soil moisture and other particles and air. So, you can see these are the pictures of type domain reflectometer. Remember that this type domain reflectometer measures both soil moisture content and salinity. So, this is very important to remember and uh, another important uh, instrument for measuring the soil water or I would say battery potential uh, rather specifically it is a battery potential. So, uh, it is called tensiometer or uh, or field tensiometers. Now, you can see this is a field tensiometer and what happens it is basically a water filled tube, this is a water filled tube, this tube is a water filled tube and uh, water filled tube closed at the bottom with a porous cup. So, this is a porous cup and uh, at the top is a airtight seal. So, there is a airtight seal you can see. And the tenacity with which the water is attracted to the soil particle is an expression of soil battery potential you already know that and remember that this tensiometer measures this attraction or tension. So, soil or field uh, or field uh, tensiometer basically measure the soil water tension and this tensiometer you know uh, what is the working principle of this tensiometer. Well, as you know it contains this porous curve. So, once we insert this tensiometer into the soil, so based on the battery at potential of soil particles or based on the battery uh, potential or attraction of water by soil matrix, obviously the water will go away through this water will release through this porous curve and as a result of water movement through this porous curve to the soil the vacuum there will be a vacuum created at the top of the tensiometer and this vacuum or air pressure will or the tension in other words will be measured by a gauge which is fitted at the top of this tensiometer. Vice versa, uh, when there is a water movement, when, the, when we are applying the irrigation water, the excess of water will further move towards the porous curve and it will, ins, uh, it, will, it, will it will go inside the uh, tensiometer through this porous curve and as a result further the vacuum will be adjusted or the you know and the, the vacuum will be further measured or vacuum or grace, you know tension will be further measured by this uh, gauge. So, this is the working principle of this uh, field tensiometer. Remember that the field tensiometer basically works at uh, you know potential range, a battery potential range between 0 to minus 85 kilo Pascal. So, beyond 85 kilo, pas uh, kilo Pascal of uh, potential or tension, these uh, you know field tensiometer uh, do not work properly. So, we have finished the field tensiometer, let us see what else. So, there is another important instrument we call it elect, you know uh, gypsum block, a gypsum block basically you know, you know, operates uh, 
uh, we also the, we also term this gypsum block as electrical resistant block because it is made of gypsum we call it gypsum block also so uh, these you know these uh, electrical resistor blocks are made up of porous gypsum you know the formula of gypsum caso4 2h2 which is embedded with uh, electrode and when we place this uh, you know uh, this uh, gypsum uh, you know gypsum block into the moist soil the fine pores in the block absorb the water uh, in proportion to the soil water potential and the more tightly the water is absorbed by the soil matrix, the less likely that water will be absorbed by these probes. And as a result, or, or, or in other words, the more tightly the water is absorbed by the soil matrix, less likely it will be, you know, it will be absorbed by the block. So, as a result, the resistant uh, to electricity flow between the electric uh, below between the embedded electrodes in the block decreases because of the changes in the water absorption and uh, these uh, changes in water uh, you know uh, the electricity flow is basically measured by this electrical resistant block and this is how it works. So, we have covered this. Another important is thermocouple psychrometer. Now, thermocouple psychrometer, remember that uh, this, is a, this is a picture of thermocouple psychrometer, and thermocouple psychrometer works, um, uh, you know, it basically, you know, measures both metric and osmotic forces. So, in a thermocouple psychrometer, a voltage generated uh, by the evaporation of a water drop is converted into a readout of soil water potential, which is basically the combination of both metric potential and osmotic potential. And it is most useful in relatively dry soils. Another important, uh, uh, you know, apparatus is called pressure membrane apparatus. Now, the pressure membrane apparatus is basically used to measure the water content at metric potential, uh, which is as low as minus 10,000 uh, kilo Pascal. So, up to this range, you know, tensiometer cannot read, tensiometer is uh, useful only up to minus 85 kilo Pascal. However, if you want to measure the soil water content, at minus 10,000 as low as uh, you know a, ten, a, a potential as low as minus 10,000 kilo Pascal, you have to use this uh, pressure membrane apparatus. And this pressure membrane apparatus, uh, it basically uh, you know it uh, after application of specific metric potential to a set of soil samples, their soil water content are determined gravimetrically by this pressure membrane apparatus. And uh, this is a very important laboratory tool and it measure, it makes possible accurate measurement of water content over a wide range of metric potential in a relatively short time. So, uh, this is in a nutshell you can see the tensiometer, uh, how this porous head is uh, uh, inserted into the soil and the gauge basically measures the vacuum and uh, electrical resistance block where the meter is attached to the wires which measures the electrical uh, flow re resistance to electrical flow based on the amount of moisture which is absorbed. And this is Newton probe, we have already told uh, that this is an aluminium, you can see this is an aluminium access pipe and the you know detector unit is inserted and the radioactive source is there and similarly time domain reflectometer or TDR, you can see there are water sensors and there is a PVC access tube. So, this is in nutshell gives a, you know a basic idea about the different methods of soil water content and this slide shows uh, different pros and cons of uh, you know different methods. Uh, obviously, uh, this gravimetric method is a destructive method uh, of uh, measurement of water content and uh, you know resistant block or gypsum block can be automated, but not sensitive to optimum plant water contents. So, uh, these are some positive or negative uh, attributes so, such as tensiometer, in case of tensiometer as you can see it is only accurate from 0 0.1 to 1 kilo Pascal, so it is a limit, limited range. However, pressure membrane apparatus is uh, you know it can be used for uh, 50 to t minus 10,000 kilo Pascal and it is used in conjunction with diametric method to construct water characteristic curve. So, these are some characteristics of uh, these uh, different methods of uh, water, uh, different methods of measurement of water content and you can see which methods are used in the field and which methods are used in the lab. 
So, this slide will give you basic overview of different methods of measurement of soil water uh, content. So, we have finished this lecture of measurement of soil water content. Let us start a tutorial focusing on different uh, mathematical problems and solution for soil bulk density and particle density, soil porosity and soil water content. So, let us start with the bulk density calculation. So, you can see uh, the first question is calculate the bulk density of a 400 cubic centimeter soil sample that weighs 575 grams which is an over dry weight. So, we have to calculate the bulk density. The uh, one thing I must clear that uh, universally we generally will uh, we, we denote this bulk density as rho b and particle density as rho d. So, the so far we are you know we, we you know so far we are terming we, 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 we are denoting this uh, bulk density and uh, particle density by b d and uh, sorry d b and d p so up to this slide we are uh, denoting this uh, bulk density by this d b and particle density by d p, but from now on we will be using rho b and rho d for determining for, for, for indicating the uh, bulk density and uh, particle density. Now, you can see uh, the solution says that the bulk density here is basically the ratio between mass of solid and the volume. Uh, volume of the uh, sorry mass of the soil and the volume of the soil. So, we already know that open dry weight is 575 grams and the bulk and the you know uh, the volume is already given. So, obviously, it is 1.44 gram per cc. The second question is calculate the bulk density of a 400 cubic centimeter soil sample that weighs 600 grams and that is 10 percent moisture. So, we know that is 600 grams which is already contain 10 percent moisture. So, to know the oven dry weight we have to divide the 600 grams with 1.1. 1.1 comes with 100 plus that uh, 10 percent. So, 100 percent plus 10 percent. So, basically it is 1.1. So, it is uh, ultimately we get uh, the oven dry weight of 545.5 grams and this uh, bulk density is 545.5 we have already calculated the oven dry weight uh, over this total uh, you know uh, bulk volume of the soil. So, we are getting 1.36 gram per cc. So, this is uh, how we can calculate the bulk density if the soil weight uh, if the soil weight is given and the moisture content is also given. So, let us see what is the next problem. So, the third problem says calculate the volume of a soil sample that is 12 percent moisture weighs 650 gram and has a bulk density of 1.3 gram per cc. So, we know that uh, Oven dry weight, uh, we, we, we know here the moist weight is given that is 650 grams and it contains 12 percent moisture. So, obviously, the oven dry weight will be 650 over 1.12. So, it is 580.4 grams. So, this is the oven dry weight and uh, we know that bulk density equal to mass of oven dry weight uh, over the volume. So, from this we can calculate the volume which is 446.4 cubic centimeter excuse me. The fourth question is calculate the bulk density of a rectangular soil sample with dimension of 12 centimeter by 6 centimeter by 4 centimeter that is 15 percent moisture content and weighs 320 gram. So, the moist weight is given 320 gram 15 percent moisture content is given. So, let us first calculate the volume of a soil. So, it is a the rectangular soil sample. So, the volume will be 12 centimeter into 6 centimeter into 6 4 centimeter. So, it will be 288 uh, cubic centimeter. Oven dry weight we can calculate from uh, dividing the uh, moist weight by the total moisture content. So, it is uh, 1.15. So, we are getting 200, uh, 272 grams and ultimately uh, uh, we are getting the volume of the soil, now we are getting the oven dry weight, obviously we can calculate now the bulk density which is 0 0.97 gram per cc. So, I hope that uh, this calculation is uh, now, uh, you know, we have understood it 
and uh, so let us go and see what is the next uh, uh, question. The number five fifth problem is calculate the oven dry weight of a 350 cubic centimeter soil sample with a bulk density of 1.42 gram per cc. Now we already know the bulk density is 1.42 gram per cc. We do not know the mass of soil. However, we know the uh, the volume of the soil that is 350 uh, cubic centimeter. So, obviously from that we can calculate the oven dry weight which is 497 grams. The number 6 question is calculate the porosity of soil sample that has a bulk density of 1.35 gram per cc and assume the particle density at 2.65 gram per cc. Now, we already know the formula porosity or porosity is basically uh, porosity uh, is basically 1 minus B D by P D into 100. So, porosity basically expressed in terms of percentage. So, you can see 1 minus B D by uh, you know bulk density by particle density uh, multiplied by 100. So, we know that here the bulk density is 1.35 the general you know of the average particle density of mineral soils are 2.65 gram per cc. So, we can calculate the porosity that is 49 percent. So, uh, now you know how to calculate the porosity from the bulk density and particle density. Uh, there is another question, uh, we know calculate the porosity of a 250 cubic centimeter clot that contains 140 cent cubic centimeter water when saturated. Now, we know that porosity basically uh, can be expressed as a combination of volume of uh, air plus volume of water over volume total volume. Now, here we already know that uh, the total volume is 250 uh, cubic centimeter and the volume of air and volume of water is 140 cubic centimeter because it is says that thus when the soil is saturated that means all the pore space are filled by water we are getting 140 cubic centimeter. So, by using this formula we can easily calculate that is 56 percent. Number 8 problem is calculate the bulk density of a soil sample that has a porosity of 45 percent. Now, here uh, you know porosity is given uh, bulk density we have to calculate and uh, you know particle density we have to assume that the particle density is 2.65 gram per cc and we will do the all the calculation for 1 cubic centimeter of soil. Now, 1 cubic centimeter of soil we know that uh, and we are we are assuming that particle density of 2.65 gram per cc. So, here if we subtract 0 point you know uh, porosity here 0 0.45 percent. So, if we subtract 0 0.45 centimeter from 1 centimeter, we will get 0 0.55 into 2.65. So, the bulk density will be here 2.65. So, we, we know that bulk density can be calculated from particle density multiplied by the volume of particles. Now, here the volume of particles is uh, uh, solid is 0 0.55 and we know the bulk particle density is 2.65 gram per cc. So, by multiplying it we are getting the bulk density of 1.46 gram per cc. So, you can now you know now I hope that these are clear to you and uh, you know uh, now you can calculate different problems related to porosity and bulk density. Uh, the last two questions are here. Calculate the porosity of a 250 gram of samples that contains 65 grams of water when 55 percent of the pores are filled with water. So, you can see here the oven dry weight is you know 250 gram minus 65 grams. Uh, so, it is 185 grams of soil. 
volume of soil solids is uh, 185 gram over 2.65 gram per cc. So, it is 69.8 cubic centimeter. Saturated water content 65 cubic centimeter over 0 0.55. So, it is 118.2 cubic centimeter of water. Total volume of soil obviously, the volume of water content and volume of soil solids. So, the total is 188 cubic centimeter. So, porosity will be volume of air plus volume of water over volume of total. We know the volume of air plus volume of water is 118.2 cubic centimeter or that is the saturated water content over the total volume of soil. So, it is 188 cubic centimeter. So, ultimately we are getting porosity of 63 cent percent. Final question, what is the particle density of a soil sample that has a bulk density of 1.55 gram per cc and a porosity of 40 percent. So, we know that formula porosity is equal to porosity equal to 1 minus Pd by Bd. Uh, sorry, 1 minus bulk, de bulk density over particle density into 100. So, we know the porosity is here 40 and by inputting the bulk density, we can calculate the particle density that is 2.58 gram per cc. So, uh, I tried to give you a basic overview of how to calculate different numerical problems uh, regarding the porosity, particle density and uh, moisture content. So, I hope that uh, you have learned something and uh, we'll try to cover uh, several uh, you know uh, more numerical problems as the uh, course goes on and i must acknowledge uh, for this numerical problem uh, you know the department of land and water resources of uca davis of usa and uh, their class notes i have used for this uh, for setting these uh, numerical problems so thank you and let us meet uh, you know with a new set of lectures for week 4. Thank you.